Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the theme adjuster, track control panel in Reaper. Now, in order to use the theme adjuster, we need to be using Reaper 6 default theme. So make sure under options and themes, we're using default 6 right here. Then we can choose the theme adjuster right here, which opens up and looks like this. Now there's different tabs in this window, track control panel, mixer control panel, custom colors, and envelopes. But in this video, we're gonna focus on the track control panel. We'll do the others in a few other videos. Now the purpose of the theme adjuster is it's gonna allow us to control how the track control panel looks. The controls and their sizes can all be controlled from this window. As you can see, there's three layouts to choose from, A, B, and C. We'll come back to that in a bit. First, I wanna show you how the default layout works. Let's go to the options menu and go down here to layouts, to track control panel, and here's where we set up the default layout for the track control panel. I've mine set to 150% on A, but you could choose B or C in many different sizes. And as you can see, there's five different sizes to choose from, but only three of them are gonna work for your computer. If you're using a high definition monitor, you're gonna use 50%, 75%, and 100%. But on my monitor, I'm only gonna see 100%, 150% and 200%, which changes the size of our controls in the track control panel. So if I choose 100%, it's gonna look like this, with the controls a bit smaller. Or if I choose 200%, the controls are a lot bigger. But I'm gonna choose 150% A, which is gonna make my controls this size and use layout A as the default. So everything we do in this window is gonna affect the default tracks. But there is a global setting that's not affected by the layouts. And that's up here. For the folder indent, let's create a folder track over here. Down here are the child tracks. This is the folder. And notice it's indented over here. And that's set up right here to be folder indent one. That's by default. If we want it to be bigger, we can set it to two and indents twice as much. Or max, it's three times as much. Or we can make it smaller to a half, a quarter, an eighth, and no indent at all. So this track is still a folder for these tracks, but it's not indented. Let's put it back to the default. Let's take a look at this control. This decides if the controls on the track line up. By default, we could see they don't. The record button is not in line from the folder to the child tracks. If we want that, we could choose it right here. Now all the controls on the tracks are now lined up. No matter what indent size we choose, max, two, one, or smaller, all the controls are still gonna line up with the folder. But that's off by default, and this is set to one. So it's gonna look like this when we create folders by default. Let's put this back. And everything else in this window is based on layout. And like we set up before, layout A is the default. So everything we do over here is gonna affect how our default tracks look. For example, right over here, we could adjust the size of the name. It's set to 140. So that's how big the name on each track is. We can make it bigger or smaller. Or if we go really small, it'll change to auto. So the longest name in our project decides how big our name is. 
But by default, it's set to 140 right here. And over here, we can adjust the volume size of our tracks. Right now, it's a knob, but we could change it to a fader right here, or how big the fader is by making it bigger. 40, 70, 100, 130, 160, and 190. And we get a nice big fader on our track, if you want that. But again, by default, it's set to a knob. Then over here, we can adjust the input size. Now, if you notice, we're not seeing the input on our tracks. That's by design with layout A. It's hidden unless we put this track into record. Now we can see the input for this track right here. And we can decide how big this is right over here. It's set to 90. We can make it bigger or smaller and barely see it at all. But the default is 90. So it looks like this. But we're only going to see it when the track is in record. Although we could change that in a bit. Then we can adjust the meter size over here. The default is 20. So if I hit play, we can see our meters this wide. We can make them thinner at 10 or 4, or make them wider to 40, 80, 160, and 320, which takes up the whole track. But again, the default is 20. Now we could also decide if the meter is on the left or the right. By default, it's on the right. We can move it to the left. Now we can see our meter over here, regardless of what size we choose, either left or right. But we could also choose this option right here, left if armed. And if we choose this option, it's going to be on the right side by default. But if we put the track into record, it goes on the left. So any track in record has the meter on the left side, making it easier to tell which tracks are in record. If they're not, they go on this side. And if they are, they go on this side. But again, by default, they're on the right side either way. So that's this section over here. But down over here, besides what controls we see, this section over here can always hide the controls individually. So if we want to hide the record arm, just hit this, and we don't see the record arm button. Or the monitor, the track name, the volume, the routing, insert effects, and so on. So we could hide or show any of the controls we want. But let's unhide all the controls so we can see them again. Let's check out these other columns. The first one decides what we see if the mixer is visible. By default, we're not going to see the routing or the pan and width if the mixer is visible. So right now, we see the routing and the panning. Let's open the mixer. And we can see the controls go away because our pan is over here and the routing is over here. So Reaper assumes we don't need it in the track control panel. Although if we want it, we can just deselect right here and still see it over here, the routing and the pan. But again, by default, they're both hidden when the mixer is open. But if it's closed, we see those controls again. We can do the same for a cord arm, hide it if the mixer is showing, and now it's hidden in the track control panel. But if we close the mixer, it comes back. So that's this column right here. And this column over here decides what we see or hide when the track is not selected. So by default, just the labels and values are hidden. So if we select our track, we see these labels and values on the track. But if it's not selected, we don't. 
Again, we could turn this off and then see them all the time. But by default, they're hidden. We could do the same thing for any other control we want. Like record arm, now it's hidden. If I select the tracks, we can then see the record arm. Or the track name, we don't see it unless we select that track. And then finally, we have this column right here, which decides what we see if the track is not armed. So again, by default, monitor, record mode, and input, and meter values are hidden if the track is not armed. So if we arm this track, we then see our input, our record mode, and the input monitoring right here. But with the track out of record, we don't. It just keeps the track control panel a bit cleaner. But if you don't want that, just turn these options off right here. And then we see everything all the time, even if we're not in record. But again, by default, monitor, record mode, input, and meter values are all hidden when the track is not in record. So let's assign some layouts for our tracks. Again, by default, they're all set up to layout A. Let's set up the second track to be layout B. We'll select it, then we'll choose the size we want to use. I'll choose 150% right here. And now this track is assigned to layout B. So everything we do over here, change the volume size, only affects that track. If we go back to layout A, it only affects these two tracks, not the second one, because it's assigned to layout B. Let's make the third one layout C. Select it 150%. Now this one is layout C, and it looks like this with a bigger meter. But again, we could change everything we just went through for layout C versus B and A. So we can make them look completely different. Now the last thing I want to show you is that we could dock this window. Just go over here, hit this button, and our layout show up over here. Go back to layout A, which adjusts this track, change the name size, or the size of our fader, the meter size, could all be changed from this window. Switch to B or C and readjust our meter, the input size, and so on. So everything can be adjusted from the docked window, which is really helpful if you want to do this on the fly while still seeing our tracks at the same time. So that's the theme adjuster, track control panel in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.